Church of St. Vincent's, as today we celebrate the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us begin our celebration. Please stand. Let us pray. 
O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the good news of Jesus Christ is recorded for us by Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The good news of the Lord. <laughs> Good afternoon. How's everyone today? Hope that you're fine. What I'm about to say is not news for any of us. And that is that some people just don't fit in. Some people don't belong. Why? Because they might be annoying. They might not fit in, or maybe they're just not the right fit for the type of people that we want to associate with. And I think you might know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you and me. We always don't fit in to the way that the Lord wants us to. The vast majority of our parish and our visitors would not have met the criteria that the apostles laid down for that Canaanite woman in today's gospel. She came to find healing for her daughter that she said was possessed by a demon. Why didn't she belong? Three reasons. Number one, she was a woman. Number two, she was a Canaanite were a Gentile, not Jew. And the third reason was that she's annoying. She kept following after them, pestering them. When she approached Jesus and said that she wanted him to heal her daughter, <clears throat> excuse me, he told her in no uncertain terms that his ministry was <clears throat> directed to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. However, his ministry ended up being much wider than that. He wasn't very, I guess you would say, nice to her. Seemingly, he compared her to a dog. It's clear that she didn't belong. But that didn't make her give up anything. Why would she not be welcome in Christ's ministry? And why would she not be a candidate for Christ's healing? Obviously, Jesus knew that he was going to encounter some non-Jews, some Gentiles, some Canaanites, because he went into the territory, the region of Tyre and Sidon. The fact that he said that his mission was only to the house of the lost sheep of Israel is somewhat puzzling because what he's doing is saying that it's a very restricted population that he came to save. 
But then later on in Matthew's Gospel, he gave the Great Commission where he said, Go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In tonight's Gospel, what we have given to us, even though it's a rather short Gospel, it's one that is just full of God's love for us and of what He wants us to be part of. <coughs> the realities that we see about salvation history, just in this passage from the scriptures, from Matthew, goes all the way back to a promise that was made to Abraham and his descendants. That God would make them his people, his chosen people, the Jews. And that Abraham and Sarah's descendants would be as numerous as the sands on a seashore. That's number one as far as the points of salvation history. The second is that the covenant is expanded. Expanded far beyond the house of Israel, far beyond the 12 tribes of Israel. It's expanded to us. And it is expanded to every other human being who ever lived or who will live after us. And so what we, as Christ's body on earth today, we take up in our ministry really what Isaiah was prophesying. And really what we're helping do is bring Isaiah's prophecy from the first reading into fruition. That God's house will become a house of prayer for all peoples. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And even though it seems as though Jesus referred to the woman as a dog, didn't knock her faith out. She was very, very persistent in her faith. Faith that wasn't even Christian at that point. Faith that she had outside of her own community. And so, Jesus lauds her great faith, and not only does he laud her great faith, he rewards it. Because we're told that from that hour on, her daughter had been healed. Last week's reading from St. Paul, and really this week, week's reading from St. Paul, carry the same thing, theme, that the gifts and the calling that God gave to Israel are ir irrevocable. That they're not going to be removed. And so at no point in human history can we ever say that God has forsaken his chosen people, the Jews. Why do we choose the good Jews? I don't know. I don't think anybody but God knows. I used to have a professor in seminary and his mantra was how ought of God to choose the Jews. They weren't necessarily the perfect people. God wanted them to be, but they weren't. He came to minister to them, but they still wandered far from him at times. To the point where the covenant that he made had to be ratified with his son. I think all this gives us something to think about. And that thought process ought to contain the fact that our salvation is not dependent upon what type of people we are. It's not dependent upon what we do or where we go or what our heritage or our ethnicity is. Our salvation is dependent upon one thing, and that 
is the mercy of God. And we can't get it anywhere else. And so as we gather and we celebrate today, that mercy of God is not restricted. We may want to restrict it. We may say, well, these people aren't following God's love or law, so they're not recipients of his mercy. It's not for us to judge. God's mercy is available to everyone. So as we gather and celebrate tonight, we ought to utter some thanks for God's graciousness, and most of all for his love for us, for you and me. Because at times we may not seem to belong, but God keeps renewing his covenant that he wants us to be part of his people. Yesterday, today, Thank you, and God bless you. Can we now rise and confess our day? <laughs> Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we approach our Father in heaven with our needs, Together, may we fill this house with prayer for all peoples with prayer to the God who cares for all nations without difference or distinction. Our response is, hear us, Lord, that the church, in imitation of its Lord, may be ever more clearly seen by the world as a welcoming and loving community of hope, which goes about healing the wounds that hate and rejection inflict. We pray. Hear, hear us, Lord. That the hearts of those who would make for war and violence may be turned from evil, and peace and justice flow as a gentle river upon every land. We pray. Hear, hear, hear us, Lord. Lord. That one and all who are God's chosen may reject the ways of hatred and injustice, social and economic, and more and more grow in profound reverence for one another, we pray. Hear, Hear us, Lord. That educators, charged with a difficult decision as how the best to go about the instruction of our youth in these pandemic times, may be graced with wisdom from on high, we pray. Hear, Hear us, Lord. That those who care for this, our house of prayer, may be blessed in their holy work, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For the sake of our parish and all names listed in our prayer list, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For those who have died and our mass intention and oil, that they may enjoy the fullness of Christ's resurrection, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, <coughs> we pray. Hear us, Lord. Gracious God, you are the God of life and compassion and love. Indeed, you set no boundaries to and no limits on your wondrous mercy. Make your human family to be one in justice and peace. Attend swiftly to the prayers of your people, voiced in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever. <laughs> and ever.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be accepted by God, our Almighty Father. Receive our offering, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and an outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of your spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ the Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. When supper was ended, he took the cup again and gave you thanks, and giving the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, that will be shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, 
and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, you may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our brothers and sisters. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I've been asked to make two announcements. One for the uh, registration for faith formation families. It's still going on. And we would ask the, the families to register as soon as you can. Also, there will be a rosary rally next Saturday at 12 noon at the Pike County uh, Courthouse. And the intention for the prayer, as I understand it, is for uh, peace in the world, but most especially in our own country, and that the Lord will continue to bless us. I think that there was supposed to be something in the bulletin, but I don't. I guess I should read it more often. But I'll read it after I write. Any questions? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As God's people, let us go in peace to love and serve Him and His own. Thank you, have a good night.